In this last section of Chapter 7, uh, which is a BC-only lesson, we're going to take a look at uh, finding arc length. And while that didn't relate necessarily to the beginning of Chapter 7, which was finding area between two curves, and then the last two sections we've looked at, which involved um, volume, it's still going to involve this idea of taking smaller things, I guess, that we can actually find and trying to add up an infinite amount of them, uh, just like you see in the picture here uh, concerning the disk method. Okay, so how do we find the length of a curve, which happens to be uh, arc length? How long is the curve between A and B? Well, unfortunately, we don't really have a way of finding that exactly. Of course, we can find uh, distances in the xy plane uh, using the distance formula, uh, but that's only for straight uh, paths. Uh, when it's a curved path, we really don't have a way of doing that. So I guess first thing we got to kind of realize is arc length is just another way of saying uh, what's the length of a curve. So the way we're going to look at this is we're going to break this arc length into pieces, uh, kind of like what we did when we first tried to find area. Uh, when we couldn't find area, we considered uh, using rectangles, um, and then of course we worked our way up to adding up an infinite amount of rectangles. Uh, in this chapter with volume, uh, while we couldn't find the volume exactly of a solid of revolution, we started off with a disk, and then we worked up uh, to the idea of adding up an infinite amount volumes of disk. This is kind of the same process. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to plot some points and connect them with line segments. Of course you can see right here these little line segments in pink. Uh, we could definitely find the length of If we found the length of each of these one, two, three, four little pink line segments, uh, we could add those up and of course that would be an approximation uh, for the length of that curve. Uh, but it wouldn't give us the exact length. So, of course, with more of these little lines, or if we put more points, of course, we'll get more lines. And, of course, our approximation will get better and better. And you can probably imagine where we're going here. We want there to be an infinite amount of these little line segments, and we're, of course, going to add up those uh, line segments using integration. So the sum of the distances between we're going to sum the distances between the points, and eventually those approximations will converge or become the exact arc length. Again, we're going to do that with the process of integration because we know that's another way of saying uh, to add up an infinite amount of things. Again, the things we're adding up here will be these uh, distances between these points uh, for these line segments. So. Let's go ahead and try to figure out uh, this formula here. I'm going to try to develop the formula that we're eventually just going to use to do these problems. So let's pretend we want to find uh, the length of this arc, or arc length. I'm going to start off by defining two points and connecting those two points. Now, of course, if I find found the length of that blue line, it wouldn't give us the exact length for the black uh, arc length, but of course it would be an approximation. Uh, we're going to call that a change of s. s is usually the letter we use to denote arc length, so of course if s is the length of that blue line, then this would be a little change of s. We are very zoomed into this picture. Remember, we want an infinite amount of these little line segments, so we're really zoomed into this little blue part right here, so that's a little change of s, which we're going to call ds. Uh, of course, this piece of this triangle that it looks like I'm making will be a little change of x, and that, of course, will be a little change of y. So we at least know by the Pythagorean theorem that ds squared plus dx squared, uh, sorry, ds squared equals dx squared plus dy squared. And kind of just note how I'm writing this. Uh, those parentheses are important because we're not squaring s, it would be ds squared. Uh, so those parentheses um, are definitely needed. Okay, so we're trying to find s, and of course, I hope you can realize that would mean at some point we have to integrate the ds. Since it's being squared right now, we can of course just take the square root of both sides, and we're left with just the ds. Uh, and now we can kind of get to that step that we're looking to do. We want to find what s is, that's the length of our arc, so we'd have to integrate ds, which would just give us s. On the right side of the equation, though, we're going to have to do 
I guess a little bit of uh, interesting factoring, so to speak. What I'm going to do here is factor out a dx squared. So I'm going to go ahead and put the result up here and see if we can understand why this is what it looks like when you factor out a dx squared. Uh, and I'm going to kind of explain it by reversing it by distributing. Imagine distributing that dx squared to the 1. Well, of course, we would just have our dx squared, which we see here. If you imagine distributing it to the second term, just kind of imagine that we have a dy squared over a dx squared. Of course, I can write that as all one fraction squared. But if you imagine it as being dy squared over dx squared, when you multiply by dx squared, those dx squared would cancel, and we're still left with our dy squared. So just kind of an odd way to look at it. Uh, but ultimately, I'm just trying to develop the formula uh, that we're just going to have to memorize and know how to use. And it's this right here. To find the length of an arc, which we're going to call s, we need to integrate from one point to another point using this formula. And you'll realize all it involves is that you find the derivative of your function and square it, add one, and then take the square root. Uh, of course, since we can write derivatives in various notations, just realize another way you might see this is instead of seeing dy dx squared, you could of course just see f prime squared. But again, ultimately, this will just be the formula we're going to apply to find the length of an arc. Okay, so based on kind of what I said there at the end of that last slide, really what it comes down to when involving this formula right here is can you find the derivative of your function? And then, of course, that would just go right here. That's pretty much all there is to it, other than, of course, maybe going through the process of integration. If the point of these problems were just to set up the formula properly, then that would really be it, and that's pretty straightforward. And that actually happens quite a bit on the AP test. A lot of these problems are just kind of set them up, and then that's it. Um, even though I'm going to kind of do these in problems in their entirety, I uh, just kind of realize the setup is really what we're after here. So the main thing we're after is what is the derivative in this case? We need to find dy dx. So you're going to have to recall back from when we saw this in chapter 5, the derivative of a natural log is 1 over whatever we're taking the natural log of. Of course, I guess this cosine x, if you really wanted to, you could call it cosine, you could call it u. So the derivative of ln u would be 1 over u or 1 over cosine x. But because of the chain rule, we'd also have to multiply by u prime. And u prime, of course, would be negative sine x. And that's pretty much it. Other than simplifying this and plugging it into our formula, uh, we're about done here. Uh, that negative sine over cosine, we can, of course, just simplify to be negative 10. And that's what we're going to plug into the formula so that we can get that. And if you notice up here in the picture or even in the directions above, we're trying to find the length of the arc from 0 to pi over 4. So those will, of course, be our bounds. Realistically, in most AP problems, this is where you're going to just end up stopping. Um, very rarely do you actually have to evaluate these integrals. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go through those steps. But usually that's where you can stop the problem in a lot of these AP problems. In this particular case, you're going to have to call, recall back from uh, pre-cal, 1 plus tan squared is equal to secant squared. So you can actually see this one is working out to be quite nice because then when we take the square root of secant squared, we're just left with secant. And if you look back in the table of integrals uh, that you've seen before in this class, uh, the integral of secant is one of the ones uh, we can look up in a table, and that happens to be the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus 10x. If we plug in the top bound of pi over 4, and if we plug in the bottom bound of 0, we'll end up with the ln of the square root of 2 plus 1. And that would be the final answer if you're looking for an exact answer, if you wanted to find a decimal approximation, if that's what the problem called for, um, I guess it would be 0.881, uh, keeping that three decimal rounding rule. So just kind of keep in mind, other than all these steps of this integral, we really haven't really seen much of its complexity. I think for a lot of these problems you're going to run into, all you really need to worry about is just the setup of that formula.
Okay, just one more example of this. Uh, like you heard me say in the last problem, it's really just a matter of setting up that formula. And then if you, in a rare case, actually need to go through all the integral steps to find the actual arc length, uh, then I guess we can just rely on those uh, integration skills we've been working on all year. So in this case, we want to find the arc length of our function here from 1 half to 2. We're going to start off with our formula here, and again, just realize this all comes down to can you find the derivative of your function, and then plug it in right there. So let's go ahead and take a derivative of our function. I'm going to go ahead and write our function here a little more derivative friendly in case uh, you don't see exactly how to take this derivative. Uh, the x cubed over 6, I'm going to write as 1 sixth x cubed, and then that 1 over 2x, of course, uh, we need to write that a little more derivative friendly. So we're going to pull that x in the bottom to the top as an x to the negative 1 power. And now you can see it's just a simple application of our good old power rule that we learned way back when. Uh, we'll bring down the power on both of those, subtract 1 from the power. And then in this step here, we're going to end up with x to the negative 2 power. So to clean that up, I'm going to just send that back down to the bottom of the fraction. So we'll end up with 1 half x squared minus 1 over 2x squared. And just to kind of maybe even clean that up just a bit more, since both of those terms have a half factor in both of them, I'm going to factor out a half uh, so that we're left with x squared minus 1 over x squared. Wasn't a necessary step, but I'm going to go ahead and do that so I can plug that into our formula. And again, don't forget to put the bounds from 1 half to 2. And again, realistically, unless it required some sort of simplification in the problem, if it was a multiple choice. Realistically, you just want to stop right there, and that's it for a lot of AP problems, is just set it up, um, unless for some reason the problem actually needs you to go through the steps of integration. In this particular problem, uh, the steps are a little complicated to break down step by step, so for the purposes of this uh, PowerPoint and this example especially, um, I'm going to kind of skip over the steps that I took to go from that step to that step, but just kind of realize um, all I did here was I squared out uh, this whole thing right here and then added one. And then you can see it looked like every factor, I'm sorry, every term had a factor of a fourth, so I pulled that out. So there's definitely a lot of steps I'm skipping here, um, but that's not really the main point of this problem. Ultimately, once you go through that algebra, you can get it down to this point. And once you do, it's pretty straightforward after that. It turns out you can factor this to become this. And then when you take the square root of 1 fourth, that's where we get this 1 half out here in the front. After that, um, the reason it was a nice problem in a sense is that, of course, we can take the square root of that square. And it would just disappear and cancel. And then we have two fairly easy integrals here. I'll end up with x cubed over 3 minus 1 over x. And then we still have our half in the front. And then we, when we apply our bounds and do the little arithmetic here, we'll find that the arc length is 33 sixteenths. Uh, but again, just want to make it clear, I think for most problems, you're really just going to need to be concerned with the setup. Uh, I don't think realistically you have to worry about going through all these steps in a lot of the problems that you might encounter. So as long as you can set this up, um, I think you've mastered uh, this idea of arc length.